Saber's up for an adventure. Hey everybody, with the Savers of Uldum expansion coming out soon, uh, my teammate Bloodyface and I came together and made a set review so we could uh, go over all the cards and give you guys a sense of how powerful we think some of these cards are going to be. So um, enjoy and uh, have fun when the expansion comes out. You want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, Garden Gnome. This is actually the first time I've seen this card. You're holding a spell that costs 5 or more, summon 2, 2-2 two, two Treants. So this is interesting because, you know, in tandem with... Uh, the new arcane, um, the, the five mana of three five taunt that's free if you have a, if you cast a spell five or more. Uh, it is there's not actually a lot of cards that are, in my opinion, good that cost five or more right now. Uh, there's nourish obviously, mm -hmm. and there's um, I guess you could kind of count starfall. It might and, become relevant, yeah. Yeah, like maybe starfire, but as far as I know, is is there another one I'm forgetting that's, that's <laughs> relevant? Spreading play. <laughs> I wish, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me let me pop up the client. I think that's about it. Uh, overflow, but I don't know how much that's going to see play. Forest yeah, Aid. Oh yeah, Forest Aid. Yeah, none of these are really like kind of the uh, combo esque druid deck that we're looking for. Um, so yeah, I kind of think that like the payoff on this card is obviously great. If you have this card on curve, four mana for basically six, seven worth of stats is amazing. I mean, we're, I mean, if you look at a card like Snip Snap, playing that on turn three against any aggro or tempo deck is going to be very sticky. It's going to be hard to remove. This card's just like almost strictly better for one more mana. You just get two twos instead of one ones. And you don't have the death rattle. Of course, you have to have a five or more card in your hand. Um, but yeah, I think, I think for me personally, this is just going to be a two star um, just because I think it's, not as good as the other payoff cards that you get for having five or more um but i think it's uh the, the star notating you know if, if they release another ui or spreading plague as card i could see this card being very good but i think for the time being uh jury just doesn't have enough cards that cost five or more what about spells that cost five or what more. about force of nature force of nature is just kind of meh yeah i guess are you are you saying can we play that in tandem with this so you could play it in like a token druid? Yeah, I so, yeah I was thinking what if what if you run this in like token druid? Wisps is still better, but I mean this gives you another option that's kind of still decent and doesn't die to swipe or something. I really like the thought of that because that's something I hadn't considered. And whenever I thought of druid, I thought of like you play one drop, two drop, three drop, token druid us stack. But I think the point you're making is you could actually play kind of an older style of token druid. You remember back in the day, or I mean back last year, where we had, uh, you know, very almost no minions. It was just UI, Arcane Tyrant, mm -hmm. Whispering Woods. Uh, you usually got all your minions from the spells that generate minions. That might work with this. Um, although this only produces three total minions, and I feel like with... Uh, the older style token druid decks you kind of cared more about how many minions you're producing for a single card um mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still gonna stick to my two star i think i think this card obviously is great if you have a consistent way to get the payoff but i'm really worried about getting to that point sure that's fair i so okay also as a background i was a little optimistic last time with with a lot of my ratings, I, I think it's not going to be a great card, but I still want to want to give it a two. Sorry, a three. Like most of these other new cards, like, like you said, there's only what? So there's, hold on, Force of Nature, and Forest State are the only two that you could like relevantly run this with in a in a tokeny deck in a more aggressive or like in a more slow deck. It's like like you said, Starfall maybe Nourish. Yeah, I'm more interested in the token aspects of this card. But actually, yeah, maybe with two activators, yeah, maybe with two activators, I'll stick with it too as well. I think that's fair. I think Druid really needed a uh, like ten mana spell. Doesn't have to be UI. You could do something completely different than UI. But I think it really needed a really big payoff spell because Nourish is obviously extremely powerful. But if you're not playing Nourish till turn six and gaining mana crystals, like you're not like what like what are we trying to ramp to on turn ten? And mm -hmm. Nourish is like one of the most powerful Druid cards that you can play. So if you're one of the most powerful spells that you can play isn't even working in conjunction with any other big spell, it's kind of like, well, what's the point? 
And then when you when that happens, it's like a domino effect. It's like, well, if Nourish isn't good, and it should be good, but it's not good because there's no payoff, then all these other payoffs that work off Nourish aren't as good anymore. <laughs> and it's kind of like a domino effect. At so least that's how I feel about what, it. What if you run this with Tree Speaker as well? With Tree Speaker? Yeah, they are tree aunts. I mean, is there a critical mass of cards that say create tree aunts that just make Tree Speaker all of a sudden good? Um, I, I would say no, because, I mean, if we're looking at it in the terms of the metagame, Warrior Mage Rogue right now. Yep. Warrior doesn't care about that. Warrior has AoE, it's got Dynamatic, it's got tons of ways to deal with these Treants or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, Mage, on the other hand, uh, cares about early aggression, but by the time you're playing Tree Speaker, you know, they've already are able to set up Frost Nova Sea Giant turns, or they're able to land a Mountain Giant Conjurer's Calling. So I feel like it's not too great there. And then against Rogue, Rogue just kind of nickel and dimes you from the get-go. And they cheat you on mana, and they cheat you on, uh, you know, removal and stuff. So I feel like it's going to be hard to get a good Tree Speaker turn against them. So just kind of looking at the lens of the current meta, I, I feel like it's going to be, nah. Okay, that's fair. All right, let's go with Crystal Merchant. Two mana, one four. If you have any unspent mana at the end of your turn, draw a card. Kind of interesting it's not statted in a way that actually fights for board meaningfully again other than like super super aggro tokeny decks which we don't really have that much of mm -hmm. i mean the effect is very powerful and if it sticks around for even more than one turn it's great and it goes in line with the quest yeah i mean i think this card's really good i see it as actually like possibly playable in wild but probably not playable in standard <laughs> it's kind of my take like, the thing is, if you don't have Poison Seeds and you don't have Naturalize to back up the card, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, you, Druid needs a swing turn, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's Druid's number one weakness right now. How does it create a swing turn that is tough for the opponent to answer? Right now, a lot of the decks have answers. They have Frost Nova, they have Brawl, etc. We've already been over this. Yeah. Um, having a cheap way to kind of fight for board and gain slight card advantage is something Druid already has, um, which I, I think this card does it very efficiently. Two mana one four is pretty nicely statted. Mm -hmm. If you draw a single card off of it, it's it's like okay. The problem with like drawing a card at the end of your turn is you can't use it immediately. So even if you like top deck this late in the game, you don't get to see what your next card is until the turn after. It's a pretty slow card. Um, I want to give it like a two, but also like another star because <laughs> I just feel like I, I think that's fair. It has potential. <laughs> You're making a lot of funny jokes. <laughs> Potential. Uh, I am. Well, potential. Yeah. Untapped potential is what the druid quest is called. And and you called it efficient when you have to keep mana unspent. Just funny little. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, I think I kind of agree. I don't think the quest is really going to do that. I mean, it'll provide swing turns later, but it'll be way too late against what people are currently running. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might be fine against stuff like Warrior. Because you have some more heal now and stuff, but... What's uh, the payoff on the quest again? Um, Osirian Tear. So you're, you choose one of the cards that both effects combined. Did you watch the uh, reveal okay. stream? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Then I think we should kind of look over all these cards before you rate stuff. Because there's, yeah, right. there's a lot of stuff here that works basically around the quest. Like, the, the, one, the next card is, is my main thing, like the Oasis Surger. That works like really well with the quest, and every time we saw it on stream, Chalky basically had it active by turn five. Yeah, it seems like on top potential is pretty easy to complete. You just do nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it literally says do nothing for four, and you can even do stuff. That's the Druid quest actually seems good. It still doesn't have that crazy big payoff because a lot of what he was doing was he was throwing in stuff like Scenarius, Power of the Wild, Tending Torrin, and then after it was active, he was just making big tempo plays. Yeah. But none of it was like super, super broken, and the decks that uh, Kibler was playing were like slow. It kind I... of feels like trying to imitate what Rogue does now. Like, Ro Rogue's role in the meta is just every card just generates value and you never run out of cards which is essentially what happens after you get into that potential online it seems like you can create creating a bunch of cards but what's important is can you burst your opponent down can you set up a clock can you beat dr boom um yeah i don't know like can oasis surger force a brawl out maybe get 
two five fives. I mean, I don't know. Like, it, it, I'm not. I, I feel like the best word I can use is it's kind of dinky. Like, it feels like it might be good against Rogue, who's also like trying to fight on the same axis. Mm-hmm. But against a deck like Mage, who's just doing broken. I, I think the main issue, Frostnova. yeah, the, the main issue with all of these cards is that they don't deal with Mage. <laughs> yeah, they don't deal with Mage. Um, they don't even line up against Brawl plus Doctor Boom that well. I feel like if you want to go with Druid's route, you know, I'm kind of looking more at Elise and Bees in conjunction with like Nomi and Auctioneer. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, even then, Mage still a huge problem. That's sure. just more of on the fringe side of things. I think that's good talk for w how we're describing this in the meta though, because Mage isn't really going anywhere, and it's still going to be like a deck that's brought pretty frequently. In multi-class yeah. and in specialist, so I, I think this is fair to rate them based off of that. Okay. I mean, I feel like two is a little bit harsh for Crystal Merchant, but yeah, I, I kind of stand by it, just even after seeing this quest. Okay. I'm going to give it a three, because I'm... I i do not know. I, I feel like the effect is very powerful. It's just kind of hard to... Other than Mage, it should be fine against a lot of other stuff, like this sort of deck they're trying to push, but... I don't think rating it a two just for mage. Maybe it is though. I mean, it replaces itself next turn. It's just very slow. And if you're playing a druid deck that's okay with that, I'm thinking of stuff like last season, you know, where you could do really broken stuff with Twig and Maligos. But this time around, it just kind of feels like druid is more of like a tempo. It, you can either be a tempo or like a combo deck. Mm -hmm. Maybe this like weird tokeny deck, and I don't know. Like it just doesn't really seem to fit in any of those to me. I mean, it seems like it's definitely worth trying out. Like I, two mana for four health is good, and it's comparable to mana tide totem. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna stay with the two. Okay, I'll stick with three, and then see if I change my mind later. Okay, you got the next one. Yeah, sure. Oasis Surger card we were just mentioning so five mana three three rush it's actually kind of so you can choose one summon an extra copy of it or give it plus two plus two so this card is similar to crystal stag when you have already gained five health um crystal stag being the five mana four four with rush where you can just get extra copy and i'm not gonna lie that card has been underwhelming even with the payoff because i remember when ike brought it to worlds and oh we tested it some and yeah, even the two four fours. It's like for five mana. What am I expecting for five mana? I mean, five mana. We're looking at cards like Zilliax that stabilize the board. Am I going to compare this to Zilliax? I mean, not really. It's not like too much of a fair comparison since like how flexible Zilliax is. But um, I mean, I think this card is going to be a staple if you're going to play it with untapped potential. Like I think outside of untapped potential, a five mana five five rush is. Uh, it's like kind of kind of a militia commander and you wouldn't really play militia commander without the town crier i mean you can't make it two three threes i don't know i i, I think this card's better than the last two agree i don't think it's i don't think it's better by much though <laughs> I, right, I'll, the, I'll give it a three since i haven't given anything a three yet okay this seems even outside of the quest just kind of decent though i mean yeah you can play wild growth into this so the turn you take to play wild growth and kind of fall behind if they develop something this even oh, if it yeah. just double trades and like you know both things on both sides of your field field dies that like seems pretty okay if, if you're trying to make a a slower game plan even for combo you could just kind of run this as removal compared to druid of the claw you know five mana four four charge a lot of times mm-hmm uh, you play that in a lot of situations just to trade. I mean, it's nice to go face, but that card's kind of been rotated out. Um, it's, it's not good enough. I mean, obviously this card, I think, is like... My point is that Druid Claw has always kind of felt almost good enough. And I think this card's better than Druid of the Claw. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it kind of just gets over that little hump. Like, to me, Druid of the Claw is like a 2. And this card's like a 3. It's just... Yeah, the, the, the choice of being able to clear, like, two early minions off... Like, even against Rogue... If they go like turn three Plink Fox, turn four Hinge Clan, this card just clears both. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, and like you said, you can even curve with Wild Growth into it. So I, I, I think I like this card. I feel really good about giving it a three. Sure. I'm on board. 
All right, let's go to the next one. Worthy Expedition. One mana spell, discover, choose one card. So this includes minions and spells. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just go over the collection and type in choose so we have a better idea of what we're looking at. So we have Crystal Power, Power of the Wild, Wrath, Druid of the Scythe, Mark of Nature, War Druid Lodi, Keeper of the Grove, Mark of the Loa, Druid of the Claw, Starfall, Nourish, Tending Torn, Ancient of Lore, Ancient of War, and Scenarius. So that's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 so far. And in this expansion, we have 16, 17. So you have three options out of 17. I think this card, or sorry, you can go first. <laughs> no, 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 I, th I think this card is crazy good. I it's... think this card is a three. I mean, I, I think it's I think it's very good. Um, I think the effect is powerful, but the fact that there's that many choose ones with so many different kind of things that they're doing will make it a little worse. Like, it's, it's pretty easy to miss if you're looking for something specific. If you're trying to look yeah, for something yeah. defensive, you can find maybe a taunt or some AoE or some removal. But if you're looking for something very specific, like I need to wrath my opponents, whatever, or you know, get a swipe for it, I, I feel like it's kind of easy to miss. So, so I think the pool's big enough that it's not broken, but I think it's a powerful effect. I mean, this is a card I think I'm just always happy to draw. Like, in cards like that, I, I mean, to me, it's like, if you compare this to Omega Assembly, this card's obviously better because the pool of cards contains spells. Spells are generally more powerful than minions. Um, and also the, the the cards that you can hit, you can't hit, you can't like low roll too hard on this because there's cards like Ancient of War, Ancient of Lore, Boiler Lodi, Scenarius, uh, you know, some pretty good heavy hitters. Um, but I mean, this card doesn't really gain you any advantage. It's really just kind of like a flex card that you can use in pretty much any situation you can play early as well if you're trying to curve out. You can use it with Gadget. Um, good point. Yeah, you can use it with Gadget. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't feel... I, I guess my bar for four would be like... Uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything from the last expansion. I don't even think I did a start review for the last expansion. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's quite up to a four for me. Okay. I, I think I would agree. I think three is fine. And it might get... Do you think it gets worse or better with more choose one cards? Depends on what they are, right? Fair. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really like the spread. Just like... There's so many different things that you can do with the choose one. And there's so many of them that deal damage and draw cards and create minions. So I, I like all three of those. So okay. I think this card's good. Mm, works so, for yeah, me. Next card is Overflow. Store five health to all characters. Draw five cards for seven mana. Um, I'm I feel like I'm one of the few people that's pretty underwhelmed with this card. Uh, it's seven mana for God's sake, and it doesn't even impact the board. Druid already has a hard time like dealing. Like, how does Druid deal with the big board? It's got Oasis Surger, which is nice. Uh, I mean, we do the next card, which is the three five taunt. We have that as well. Um, but I feel like without the cards, like the free 3-5 taunt, this card's just unplayable. Um, and, and I think that we, like with all the other synergies, this card becomes playable. But is it as good as Worthy Expedition? No. Is it as good as Oasis Surger? No. At least in my opinion, it's not. Uh, 7 mana is just a lot, and I would expect more. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm giving this a 2. I agree. It, it's... I mean, also with the amount of ramp cards you have, like if we had Wild Growth... And Jade Blossom, for example, this might be a bit easier to get off too. And even then, it's kind of slow. But right now, with just Wild Growth, and if you don't hit that, and you're waiting till turn seven and doing this, it just doesn't do enough. Because even if you do draw the five cards, there aren't enough swingy things you can do to overcome the you know the seven mana tempo loss. You just you yeah, just cost. exactly. Yeah, Druid back in the day, once it's ten mana, it's like it's doing all sorts of unfair shit, spreading plague, swiping developing a twig, playing Malfurion, basically just getting a free turn. Yeah, and that was with the 10 mana UI that actually did more than just draw five cards. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I think I'm on board with the two. Okay. Anubisath Defender. Anubisath? Yeah. Um, five mana, three five. Taunt. Costs zero if you've cast a spell that costs five or more this turn. Kind of interesting. It gives you some way to spend some, like... 
to, to get tempo out of some of these more expensive cars that don't really do that much. Obviously, Overflow is one that just came out that we looked at. There's another one, Hidden Oasis, later. Um, if we look at what we have in the set in, in, in the standard already, at spells that cost five or more, we talked about this with the first card too. Force of Nature, we probably won't be seeing that too much. I don't think this card belongs in a sort of tempo tokeny deck because you'd rather just have other cards that do stuff before turn five or stuff that has higher payoff. Starfall, you could put this in a slower deck where you want to ramp up and do something like that. So I could see it being run with Starfall, Nourish, perhaps Starfire, uh, probably not Force Aid. So there's not that many options for you to use this with. And because of that, I think it's a two, but I'd put a star on that because it's it could get better if um, more usable, I guess, expensive mana card, expensive cards are are printed. I'm actually going to give this a three, and I do agree with most of what you said. I just kind of think that as I'm staring at the pile of druid cards more and more, <laughs> the hidden oasis, which we haven't gotten to yet, is uh, kind of seeming a lot more appealing because. Once you have untapped potential online, six mana six six with taunt that gives you twelve health, and you get to like develop the three five. That might be the swing turn druid needs because it can gain the health and develop the board. So I'm gonna give it a three. Um, I agree that I don't I'm not too impressed with, like Starfall Nourish and all that stuff, but I can kind of see a choose one deck maybe being maybe being good in conquest. I don't think it's really up to snuff and specialist, but. In uh, multi-class format, I could see it maybe being a role player. I'll throw a star next to it just because I feel like it could get better. But okay, I mean, good. in general, a lot of these cards, eh, we have to be careful with the stars too because all of these, like any card, could get better with more support. Just put a star next to Druid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Hidden Oasis, six mana, summon a six six with Taunt, or restore twelve health. So I think on the surface, like this card's just unplayable. Like it's a one. Um. I mean, it's fine to get off like Worthy Expedition or something, but would you ever include in your deck? God, no. The only thing I really like about this card is untapped potential, and the fact that untapped potential is so easy to complete um, that like you can actually afford to just do nothing for four turns, or like not nothing, but you can afford to not spend all your mana for four turns, and then by turn six you just play Hidden Oasis and an Anubisoth Defender or whatever, and all of a sudden it's like well, those few turns that you spent not spending your mana, it's kind of made up for it. And now you also have untapped potential complete, which allows you to, you know, get other payoffs as well. So I think this card is kind of the linchpin that this deck is going to need. Well, I guess Oasis Surger would be more fair to say is more of the linchpin because it's obviously a much better payoff because, and it's also a card that's good on its own. Whereas with Hidden Oasis, this card's very underwhelming um, by itself. But I think like with the quest, it's good enough. Um, so I, I mean, I say so many positive things about it, but I'm still just going to give it a two. I won't get. I feel like a lot of people will give this a one, but I think this card is playable, so I'll, I'll give it a two. I think six mana six six taunt is is okay. It's not crazy good. And again, if we had more ramp cards, maybe it would be a bit better. But with just wild growth and nourish, and like you, on turn six too, if you're getting you know hit in the face, can you really nourish? So you probably just have to do this anyways. But I, I don't know how often you'll be including this in your deck. If you're doing the quest, then yeah. But again, as, as a standalone card, it's not going to be that great. I think I'm on board with it too. Okay. At least the Enlightened. This one's pretty exciting. 5 mana 5 5. Battle Cry. If your deck has no duplicates, duplicate your hand. So this kind of screams combo. Um, I mean, some people might look at this and say, oh my god, we're playing Highlander, we're just getting value. But that's not really going to work in Druid. <laughs> Um, it's going to have a hard enough time keeping up with some of the other decks with duplicates, so I don't think Highlander is going to work with this. Um, I mean, if you can make a combo deck work with this, it's insane because, I mean, just, just off the top of my head, and this isn't a full OTK, but if you have like Malagos and two Moonfires, you draw your deck, you play this, suddenly you have Malagos, four Moonfires, which is what, uh, 24 damage? And that's without anything like Dream Petal Florist, which I believe is still in. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it could get even crazier, right? Like, let's say you Dream Petal Malagos. Even if you don't have multiple Moonfires, you, you now have a two mana Malagos that can get duplicated. The thing is, it takes up time. It, it takes time to get to that point, and I don't think Druid has that kind of time with what's in the meta. Not without stuff like Spreading Plague, like it used to before. So I, I think mm -hmm. this card is powerful, but I don't think it'll fit in the meta just yet. So I want to give it like. 
I feel like three is too high, but two is too low because it has a lot of potential. But I'll probably do like a two with a star. Although I want to give it a three, I just don't think it's quite playable. Mm. Right now, anyway. I, mean, I agree with everything you say. Uh, this is just, I feel like this is one of those cards that I could spend hours flipping through my collection trying to build decks around it. And I love cards like that because it's not obvious how it's going to be broken. It definitely has the potential to be broken. It also has the potential to just be useless because of what you said about, you know, Druid not being able to get to the end game. I agree with the fact that, yeah, you don't want to build a singleton deck with this card. You just want to build a heavy cycle deck, you know, get to the last five cards or whatever when your deck has no duplicates and then you can duplicate the combo cards. Um, yeah, I just don't see how we're getting to that point. I don't see how we're surviving an onslaught of mountain giants. I don't see how I, I see. I can see this working maybe against warrior. I, 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 I mean, there's got to be some way that you can assemble maybe just uh, some way to offset fatigue, you know, just like duplicating Elysiana, maybe in specialist or something. You can duplicate Elysiana. To just like out fatigue a warrior or something there's also a new shuffle card okay yeah and so neutral. Yeah. so i think this card uh I, i'm gonna give it a three because uh right now specialist i i don't you know it still is part of relevant it is relevant in the current format and i think this card has a unique enough effect that you can build your deck in such a way that it, it can help you counter warrior um which actually that might come up in uh multi-class format as well if you want to try and beat warrior uh, this card can help you with that. Um, yeah, I just I, I I'm gonna give it a three. I think that this is more of a tournament card. This isn't really something that I want to go play on ladder um, because I think this is a card that you want to use to like exploit a certain strategy. Um, but does it really fit in the current meta? I, I don't think it's really there yet, like Druid as a class. But I think that if you're trying to make Druid into a certain role player, at least gives you the ability to do that. So. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give it a three. How are we standing on decimals? Are we just going to go with integers or? I like integers more, but okay. if you want to, I, I always feel like I want to give it a 2.5 or like 3.5 because <laughs> I don't want to commit to that hard integer. Let, let's make it clean for now. It's if probably the, better. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't capture all the new. We can do this on a hundred point scale if you want. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's bad enough on five. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You got next one? Oh, yeah, sorry. Bees. Choose a minion, summon four, one, one bees, then attack it. This card's obviously, it, this card's just good. Three mana deal four damage is Shadow Bolt, but this card can give you leftover one ones if, uh, you know, some of your bees can survive the attack. It works with uh, Floop's Glorious Gloop, obviously. Yeah, I mean, this card's just solid. I think that it's uh, not an auto include. I think that, um, I mean, I'm just going to give it like a three. I mean, you play this on like a three, two, like a Sorcerer's Apprentice, you're happy. You play it on like a Burglar, you have a leftover one, one. Uh, you include the card Floops Glorious Gloop in your deck, and you ever draw these two in combination together, you are very happy. Also um, works with Gadgets and if you get to that point, too. Yeah, yeah also works with Gadgets and, too. So I'm, I'm going to give it a three. I'm, I'm not really sure how it's going to fit in, but it's definitely going to fit in somewhere. I think this is flexible enough that I want to give it a four because you can run this in anything. Throw it in token yeah. druid as a bit of removal, sure. You can hit your own minion too if your opponent's not developing anything. Like you could bees your own guy and then just power the wild. Obviously, it's like a turn five play, but even just beezing your own guy on curve is, isn't bad if you don't have like wisps of like whispering woods. What's it called? Mm -hmm. That. Um, I think it's flexible enough and powerful enough that I want to give it a four. Okay. I don't think it's in every deck, but like, you could fit this in a lot of stuff and it would just be fine. Yeah, I mean, I I, I agree with that. I just don't think it's as uh, I don't think it's super powerful. I guess is why I'm not giving it a four. Yeah. It's consistently good, but not like amazing. I guess. Final one. Uh, the quest untapped potential. Quest, end four turns with any unspent mana, and the word reward is the Osirian, Os Osirian? Osirian tier, which means that all your choose one cards have both effects combined. Um, the payoff is pretty cool, um, but it doesn't say win the game, and you can have a lot of pretty big swing turns after that. But let, let's let's go through like the first three or four turns of, of the, this quest deck. So on turn one, you play this, um, if you're on the play, it does like turn one's gone. You don't get the unspent mana. And if you want to get it, um, if you're on coin, you can, what we saw Chalky do on stream for the reveal stream is play this on the coin, 
and then coin just to get the extra turn with the unspent mana because then you end up with one mana and that's already one out of four completion on yeah, turn two you can't hero power because then it yeah so we either do nothing or we find something for one mana and i want to see if if we can actually find something relevant for one mana that you would put in this deck well you would play uh crystal play Pile, the expedition maybe? or the, the expedition, expedition right? oh yeah that's fair okay cool fair maybe crystal power but probably not it doesn't actually work well with the completion yeah hmm. yeah i see what you're saying on the coin this card's a lot easier to complete on the play you're basically never hero powering on turn two i think that's fine not a big deal um turn three is a little bit more awkward because i think a lot of these decks are gonna want to include wild growth um but maybe not I i'm still not sure about wild growth or no wild growth in these uh new druid decks mm-hmm Kind of leaning more towards uh not with untapped potential because um you know we're going to be playing cards like the two three that cycles if you have a quest um probably going to be playing like it seems like a lot of these uh, druid cards require a lot of like cards to work in combination and then of course you always play wrath and swipe and all that stuff so i think that um there's not going to be a whole lot of room for other cards um like wild growth so I, I I don't know. Like I think it's really easy to com it's really easy to complete two out of the four, right? You just mm -hmm. skip turn two, turn three, kind of whatever. Turn four is where you're just like, well, if you have to swipe, you have to swipe. It's gonna kind of come down to like, what's your opponent doing, and is it really hard for you to counter that? I feel like Druid is kind of turning into this anti warrior class to me. Uh, anti-control warrior maybe maybe uh, it might not even be able to beat bomb warrior just because of uh how slow it might be mm -hmm. but um it, it definitely seems like druid can become a pseudo infinite value deck it can amass a never-ending stream of cards with elise and if you want to play elisiana there's probably other ways to get off fatigue like druid could probably figure out a way to get around fatigue they have overflow they have all these ways to draw a bunch of cards they have healing they have card selection uh it's kind of turning into this like big uh, infinite value deck you know or you compare it to rogue which is more of like an infinite value deck but it's aggressive and tries to win off burst damage this uh this style would try to just not lose the game i guess um which is concerning because obviously that strategy will never work against mage <laughs> it, it, it might work against rogue and warrior two-thirds of the meta the rogue being a maybe I, i'm i'm feeling pretty good that druid can be warrior um, yeah i think that's fair but uh yeah i, th I think just the fact alone uh, the, if, if we're just judging this card based on can this beat one of the top tier classes, it, it does. So I, I, I think I want to give it a three. I'm on board um, with a three. All right, let's move on to Hunter. Um, I think you're up. Okay, first up we have Ram Kahin. Oh, God. Yeah, it's going to be uh, fun. <laughs> wild Tamer. Three mana, four, three. Copy a random beast in your hand. Random. Oof. If this card let you choose, which wouldn't really make sense from a UI perspective because Hearthstone hasn't really ever done something like that before. Man, I was really excited because I didn't I didn't see the random at first. I was like, wow, you just Dire Frenzy or Scale Hide or just copy a buffed up Timberwolf in your hand and uh, you're right. Oh, oh, but this isn't even a beast. So okay, you I'm can't, realizing yeah. so many things here. <laughs> oh, okay. So you, it's not a beast. That's a huge issue. Um, because the current iteration of Beast Synergy requires your deck to be all beasts. This is kind of a bummer. Uh, I think this card was a beast. It would probably be a three. Three mana, four, three draw a card that you have some control over is just good. But the fact that you can't do that, unless okay. there's some other beast that I'm not thinking about um that's like really good to copy i guess i don't know all the beasts yet um, you can copy have a rhino it. so okay if you were to run some sort of combo thing with all right let's let's go back to here uh if you go let, let's skip ahead a few just to talk about something the scarlet web weaver reduce the cost of a random beast in your hand by five mm -hmm. again the fact that it's random is kind of awkward because if you end up having multiple beasts in your hand and you're trying to get a specific combo out could be problematic but if you run this with Rhino, you could set up a pretty huge Zul'jin where you just have a zero mana Tundra Rhino in hand. You go Tundra Rhino, Zul'jin, and then you just have like Unleash the Beast in there. You have Animal Companions, and sometimes you just set up Lethal that way. But that seems pretty like hard to do 
because if you were to run this wild tamer in there you can't run master's call for you know more consistent draw to get to that point where you have the zuljin yeah exactly it's it's this or master's call and if you have to pick between the two master's call is just better mm -hmm. yeah so I'm, I'm gonna give it a very sad one and it just it's not playable it's not a beast yep agreed there can't really I mean, the stat line's fine, but it, it, it's it's actually such a big deal that you can't run it. Or yeah. that, that you can't uh, play this with Master's Call. It's like it's like you meet a nice girl, and you think she's perfect, and then she just has all these red flags, you know? She's just not over her ex, and you just have to break it off. So that's what Wild Tamer is. Could have been so good, but it's not a beast, so you got to break it off. Sorry. That happens. I didn't see this card actually out there. So the next card is uh, Hyena Alpha, 4 mana 3-3. Three, three. Battle Cry, if you control a secret, summon 2-2-2 two, two, two Hyenas. 4 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you said it first. Um, so there is, okay, let's let's talk about secrets that are playable. First of all, this is a beast, so it passes the first check. Um, let's talk about traps. We have, I'm not sure secrets, traps. Explosive Trap, Freezing Trap, Misdirection, Rat Trap, Snake Trap, Snipe, and the new card, which is Pressure Plate. The issue is that a lot of these can just be activated before you get to that 4 mana Hyena Alpha. If you're playing against a, a minion or board centric deck, i.e. Rogue, another Hunter, sometimes Warrior with their 1-drops, quite frequently if you play a, like a Secret on 2 or 3, it'll get procced. Against something like Mage, it might not, and at that point this could be a decent 4 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. But I feel against a lot of decks, you won't be able to play this on curve consistently. So you'll have to do it on like turn six or something, which is a lot less crazy. Still decent, but not as crazy as, as it being on, on turn four. I hear what you're saying, but if you think about mass contender, I'm not sure how much, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had a decent amount of experience either playing the deck or playing against the deck, but. It feels like it's really not that hard to get Mass Contender off. Um, it is one less mana, so you can curve into it. This is four mana, it's a little bit tougher to curve into. But I'm not, I mean, I, I am, like, obviously I'm a little bit concerned about it, but if you're playing a dedicated secret deck, I would be thinking you're running six traps minimum, and two of those traps probably being Rat Trap. Rat oh, Trap being point. something that is very infrequently procced early on. Um, and something that you can actually keep if you're playing a Mass Contender Hyena Alpha deck, a secret. If you're playing a Secret Hunter deck, you could probably even argue keeping these uh, secrets that are harder to proc, um, which I guess is only Rat Trap. I mean, Freezing's pretty easy to proc. Well, you can actually can control the board. Actually, I mean, Snake Trap, too, that's a fair point, because yeah, if you don't play, play yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, exactly, yeah, that's actually a great point, the Snake Trap. Uh, yeah, I think this card's really good. <laughs> like, four mana for 7-7. Seven, seven. I mean, the only downside is you have to... You just have to have a secret up. I don't think that's really that big of a downside. Okay. Um, I do think that, like, Beast Hunter is still the superior it current iteration. Um, does this card completely change that? I think I think I th actually think it might because the cool thing about Secret Hunter is is you can either play Master's Call or you can play Mass Contender and plus like other non beast stuff mm -hmm. and, and and both are somewhat valid. Uh, both are not top tier right now, but I think that this card could in in combination with some of these other Hunter cards. Like we haven't gotten to some of these other later Hunter cards. I think are also decent. Um, yeah, I actually think this card's good. I want to give it. I, I I really want to give it a four, but that, that's probably too high. So I'm probably I'm just gonna say a three for it. Okay. I think after thinking about rat trap and snake trap, it actually and, and those would be some of the secrets. Like rat trap for sure, you'd be running, especially in like what we currently experience as our meta. And I I think even in the current secret hunters, they're they are running snake trap too. At least one of. So I think with that, maybe it is a bit more consistent than I originally thought. I don't know if I'd give it a four without having like testing and stuff to see what it looks like, but I, I think it's definitely better than I initially yeah, thought. Yeah, four, four, is, four is probably too high. Um, kind of just got excited about 
the possibilities. Um, four mana seven seven. <laughs> yeah, four mana seven. Because I mean, the, the the cost of having to play a secret early on and having it in play, it, it's a very real cost. And I'm actually, I think I was kind of discounting the mana you spent on the secret originally a little bit too much. Um, you know, if you're you you can't ever go hyena companion into into hyena alpha. Like you can never curve like that. You'll always have to play a secret turn two or turn three. Uh, later in the game, that's kind of whatever. This card's still good later in the game, obviously, because it's so undercosted stat wise. Mm -hmm. But in terms of curving out, I guess you have like less nut curve out draws because you sometimes you just don't have a secret in your hand. You just draw the secret on turn three and you have to play it just to get the high alpha online. That's kind of annoying. Uh, sometimes you have hyena and a secret in your hand, and if you want to play your hyena alpha, you have to play a secret. But what if that secret? What if that secret that you happen to draw on turn two is something that's easily procked? Well, now all of a sudden you are more incentivized to play your hyena. All right, you play your hyena on two. Well, now are you going to play your secret on three? Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a little bit awkward, and I think that little awkward tension is kind of what brings it down a little bit for me. Man, almost kind of makes me want to give it a two, but it, I think it's possible. I'm going to stick to a three. I, I do um, think it has a lot of potential. I, I'm, I'm fine with a three. Yeah. Okay. Am I next or are you next? Uh, thank you. Okay, six mana, swarm of locusts, summon seven, one, one locusts with rush. Uh, so in order to get full value from this card, you have to play it on an empty board or trade all your minions in first, which is very rarely as a hunter do you ever want to trade in all your minions first. And yeah, seven, one, one's kind of easy to answer. Um, like, if you're just trying to play this for a bunch of threats, it's kind of easy to answer. Um, obviously, with Hyena, this card's mm -hmm. great. If you stick but a Hyena and then mana. follow this, yeah. But realistically, are you ever putting this card in your deck? No. Might you take it over, take it off a Mark Shot, maybe. Like, get off Shimmerfly, maybe. But I'm never, like, putting this card in my deck, right? I, I think it's just a one. I think I agree. I think it's way too situational and the way it's costed i mean clearly it's it, it always gives you okay it fills your board basically um no matter how many minions you currently have and unleash only summons the same number of hounds but unleash has charge and it's a bit more flexible this this is just i think too expensive agreed and like like you said sometimes you picked off a mark shot again because it'll be situationally relevant but i don't think it'll be situationally relevant enough to put it in your deck yeah Someone in chat just said six mana. Your soldier summon seven one ones and no good minion. Yeah, that, that, so honestly, true. yeah, that's a real downside too, right? I mean, sometimes yeah. that just happens, and then you're like, all right, well, I guess I lost the game now because I played this card. That's actually really relevant too, because if you ever play Mark Shot and you get offered this card, you might not realize it until it actually happens. So thank you for saving me from doing that, because I would totally have done that. All right, safe to move on. Yeah. All right. Quest, unseal the vault. Um, quest is summon 20 minions, and the reward is Ram Ramkahan Roar, which replaces your hero power with um, two mana. Give your minions plus two attack. Um, I was kind of skeptical about this at first, just when I saw the quest and the, and the reward. After seeing Chalky play it on the stream, I thought it was a bit better than I originally thought, but I still don't know if I like this enough. You don't really, what I like about this is that you don't have to really build your deck crazily around this because it's not something like, you know, play five choose ofs or, you know, play seven random burgle spells. This is just your normal game plan will summon minions. So you don't really have to invest too much. You can make cards that work better with the upgraded hero power but I don't know if you want this per se, especially when you're also running something like Zul'jin. Oh, huh, that's funny. I mean, Wait, I guess the... Zul'jin doesn't matter, right? It just replays the quest. True. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's fair. The art is a card back, isn't it? I'm not sure. It might be. It's just the flavor text says, "Huh, that's a nice card back." Doesn't oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can see the point of um, it doesn't really require you to build your deck in an awkward way like some of the other quests might. Um, summon 20 minions is still 
kind of a tall order and also replaces a card in your starting hand and the hero power it's like how do you convert the hero power into burn damage right that that's all you're essentially wanting to do off your hero power is convert it into burn into face damage you have to have a minion live in order to do that in order to be on par with steady shot you need to have two minions live to be twice as good as steady shot but we're p putting this card in our deck to just have a better steady shot uh, I don't know. I, I don't think like you really care about the cumulative ticks that you get off the hero power mm -hmm. um, as much as you would care about just trying to convert this into burn damage. So, I mean, to me, it's a one. I just I just don't ever want to voluntarily have this card in my opening hand. I, I think I agree. Any other random card. And most of the time, too, late game, if you have minions sticking and hitting face, like that's, you're happy. Like, sure, you could get more if you have this, but... Eh. Like, if, if my minions are sticking on the board, I'm happy enough as it is, because I already have cards that synergize with them. I have Timberwolves, you know, uh, um, Dire Frenzy, stuff like that, so it's, like, fine. Yeah. I think I agree. I don't think this is... I like the art, though. The art so is nice, yeah. Gets cool points for that. Okay. All right, so I think I'm next. All right, Desert Spear. Three mana, one three weapon. After your hero attack, summon a one one Locust with Rush. I feel like is this card ever on par with uh, Hatchet? The two, the sorry, what card? Hatchet. Is that what you're talking about? The two mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hatchet. Hatchet's two mana, six damage. This is three mana, six damage. Kind of six damage, um, but I don't have to have a beast in play, and I get a one-one beast with rush that can work with hyena, maybe Timberwolf, but that just seems so marginal, and it only goes face for one damage. Going phrase for one damage is probably the worst part about this card. Agreed. Um, so to me, it's just a one. The three mana thing is, is kind of weird too, because let's picture a game where you're you're just playing this on three. That just feels really bad. Like, it's so funny because muster for battle is like three mana summon three one ones, and you basically get the same weapon. And muster for battle is like nuts and wild. And like, this card is trash and standard. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah, it just, it's just bit. too slow. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. It is. It, it's. I mean, and, and it's. It's just not powerful enough. Because, sure, on, on two headhunters, actually, is a bit better too. Because you don't have that much to do. Sometimes you play secret if you're playing that deck. Sometimes you play with a hyena or like spring paw plus the other thing. But on three, you want to be going like animal companion or even master's oh, yeah. call. Like, and, and if I'm not doing that, three drops and hunter. Yeah, oh, and yeah. if I'm doing this instead, it's. Just, I don't feel like that's crazy powerful so i agree with the one okay pressure plate new secret um two mana of course after your opponent casts a spell destroy a random enemy minion um one relevant thing to note when i saw this is that let's say your opponent has giant conj stuff um so this is after so if your opponent has giant conj the conj will go off then one of the minions will die however if your opponent uh, has giant coin conj yeah. can't do that so this requires a bit of thinking if you're including this and playing against Mage um, based on what they can do, whether they're on or off coin and what their hand size is. But, I mean, this effect is pretty powerful, I think. I think this is, like, I, one of the I secrets. I thought this card was good, and I remember people on my stream when I brought it up, like, a few days ago said I was crazy. Oh, I think this is good. I don't I think, think it's... it's good, too. I don't think it's I, broken, but I think it's, I think it's a better secret than some of the other secrets we currently have. I just... I think... People really underestimate the implications of a secret, especially in a tournament setting where you have open deck lists. If I am playing Secret Hunter and Soul, it's just you're, I'm obviously playing this card. Yeah. Like, and he, if I go secret on the play turn three, just like in the scenario you said, and it's turn four, and like let's say they have like the giant cons, like they're gonna feel really awkward or whatever. You know what I mean? No, it, you I can lose the game on the spot. <laughs> exactly. You, <laughs> yeah. Giant coin. Oh, I guess I, like, oh, well, game two. I'm, like, I'm going to have a stupid explosive trap up, and they're going to be literally sitting there shitting their pants thinking, I don't know what to do. Because <laughs> it's such a shitty scenario to be in. Mm -hmm. uh, just literally including this card in your deck, the very existence of it, whether or not you have it up, makes it a good card. Yep. It does amazing things, and you don't even have to play it. I mean, you might just, yeah, obviously you could just never play around it, but then one-sixth of the time, you're just going to get freaking destroyed. And it kind of feels really good when you go from a scenario where, oh, if my opponent has this nut curve, to I lose, to, oh, I win one-sixth of the time. Yeah. 
I, I, I think it's a three. I don't think it's broken, but I think it's it's good, and the threat of it is good as well. Yeah, I agree. I think this is a three. It's, if anything, despite all the haters out there. <laughs> okay. Hunter's pack. Huh. Pack. It's like a play on words, because you get a pack. Like a pack <laughs> of cards. As a random hunter beast, secret and weapons your hand. Ah. Uh, um, it's like... You don't get to pick the cards. Yeah. A random secret weapon. So we have Gladiator's Bow, Eagle Horn Bow. Hatchet. Um, hatchet, this and Desert Spear. I think that's it. So just four weapons? Yep. Yeah, I'm not really happy getting any of those. Um, it seems like a one. I'm struggling to figure out how this isn't a one. It's it's made. good value, but what Hunter wants to do right now is tempo stuff, not value. Like Hunter's not really running out of value. They end up getting to late game, they play Zuljin, they probably won the game after that. And sometimes they win before Zuljin. And if you're running stuff like this, it's a bit harder to win before Zuljin because you played three mana not to do something on board, but to get cards. Yeah. And sometimes the cards aren't even like great. Sometimes sure they're they're fine, but the cards you want to run, you'll be running in your deck anyway, so yeah 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 exactly so i mean i can see this being good if you're like low on cards and you play mark shot and you discover it like you're probably pretty happy in some of those scenarios but it also fucks up your hand for Z Ooh. it also messes up your hand for zuljin um, someone was asking do you play this with mountain shine <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it is three mana draw three that's actually the best application that we've heard for it so far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's Galaxy Brain. Well, we'll test it out. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, one. Okay. Yeah, one. Scarlet Webweaver. This card's, this card's cool. Six mana, five, five. Battle Cry. Um, reduce the cost of a random beast in your hand by five. And this is a beast itself. So if you include the... It, it's not quite as simple as this, but if you include the discount that it, this gives, you're technically this technically nets out to a one mana five five. Um, some people have been saying that you can, like I mentioned earlier, you can combo this with. First of all, it's a beast. You can run in in normal like um, beast hunter now because it works with master's call. What you can do is run this with rhino. Make try to isolate the rhino in your hand. Make it zero mana, and then if you run stuff like unleash the beast, animal companion, stuff like that. After Zul'jin, you can or like you can play Rhino with the Zul'jin, and all the things you summon have have a charge at that point, which isn't always an OTK, but it's it's very powerful. I'm thinking even like earlier on, you just play this on turn six with a Rhino. You have a like a six mana charging five five and a two five, which is like pretty decent. I, I think this card's a three, just because it's. I, I don't think it's broken. It it, it allows it allows you to do some cool stuff. But I think the fact that it's six mana and it takes a while to get to that point um, makes it a little bit more reasonable of a card than than broken. Plus, you have to isolate the Rhino, which means you'd have to throw away, you know, combo pieces you might be holding like Timberwolf or stuff like that. Yeah, for me, this card's a two. Um, I think that everything you said is really cool, but I feel like, realistically speaking, you play Master's Call in turn three. Well, first of all, you're probably going to play this card over Unleash the Beast because the yeah. Beast Hunter deck is kind of already bloated. Um, so you'd probably just want to cut a six drop for it. So when you play Master's Call in turn three and you draw this card and you don't draw Rhino, that's going to be really awkward. And you're going to kind of have to sit there and you're kind of going to have to have this like weird dead card in your hand that's like you can kind of play it and get the mana discount. But there's do you, do you even I think like all the beasts in the deck are like one and two mana is the thing, right? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so if 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 you ha if there were like more four drop and like five drop type of beasts that were just like good, which I guess like kind of the next the next card, uh, Wild uh, Blood Stinger is like pretty good. It's more of like a conquest sort of thing. I could see running the two in tandem with each other if you like have a specialist side deck that just has Scarlet Wet Weaver and uh, Wild Blood Stinger against some I don't know strategy or whatever. But uh, yeah, I think like realistically speaking, I don't think I ever want to start this in my primary deck if we're playing specialist. Uh, I could see it like in some sort of package where you're trying to like OTK a, someone like a warrior and trying to like discount your rhino, like you said. 
Yeah, but it being random, and I don't really like when you have Rhino in hand. I don't really want to play all my cheat piece. I really I want to save all my cheat piece first. So you can combo uh, them together. Yeah, so I can combo stuff. with the Rhino. So it's just kind of like it feels really hard to like make everything line up. I feel like you need the stars to align to really make this card shine. So for me, it's I, I give it a two because it's definitely not unplayable and it's got a powerful effect. And I could definitely see it working as like a role player in a multi you know multi class form like conquest or in a side deck like con a specialist. But so but. Um, yeah, starting out wise, I don't think so. Maybe. Okay, I think I'll stick with the three. While Bloodstinger is that me? Yep. All right, <laughs> six nine, <laughs> six mana sixty nine. This is just for you, Twitch chat. Wild Bloodstinger, summon a minion from your opponent's hand, attack it. Uh, yeah. Not only is this card like a great meme, but it's also this card's just good. Like what? This card, like, this card is just good. This is just a good card. Um, I'd probably give it, like, a three, maybe a four. I feel like there's not a whole lot to say about it. This card, you see what you get. There's no, like, interesting combos. But, uh, yeah, most minions are going to be a lot smaller than a 6-9. And there's a lot of value minions that I would like to pull. High Spare and Tog Waggle be nice to snipe. Leroy? Uh, Leroy would be, a, yeah, that's a really nice one to snipe. Just any low-cost minion great i have a six mana six eight or whatever if you summon pull out a one one uh yeah i can yeah. definitely see this being uh like an auto include as like a one of in beast hunter i think it might be it's a good. bit too heavy to have two right yeah it's, it's already twos. yeah i think it's like i think it's better than unleash the beast um if you're like trying to decide what like maybe like a one and one split instead of like two unleash the beast or something mm -hmm. um so yeah, yeah I, I'll, i'd give it a three yeah, I'm on board. I, I don't think it's like it's very powerful, but like you said, the the deck's kind of bloated as is, and you don't want to start throwing in more expensive stuff because then it makes the early game less consistent, which is kind of not what you want. But I definitely think it's it's pretty decent. Cool, three as well for me. Uh, Dino Tamer Brand, um, seven mana two four, not a beast. Um, Battle Cry. If your deck has no duplicates, someone can crush. And King Crush is the 9 mana 8-8 eight, eight charge beast. This card's just <sighs> bad. I mean, the effect is powerful, but I don't know if you want to be running like a Highlander <laughs> Hunter. I do. I love this card. I don't think it's good, but I love this card. Oh, it's, it's, a, like... it's, it's incredibly fun, and I think it's super cool. And the effect is powerful, it's just not yeah cohesive with what we're trying to do with hunter right now i just want to give this a five just because <laughs> i love it so much you can do that but i probably should do that i mean i am definitely going to build a highlander hunter deck like for sure oh this will see play just not in tournaments i think i think my greatest accomplishment wasn't making worlds it was uh back in the day in like 2015 winning an open cup with highlander paladin i don't even remember what the payoff oh yeah i was playing reno paladin Basically, in every open cup, I would just play a different Reno deck, <laughs> like not not Reno lock, because I didn't want to like play the good Reno deck. But I just love building decks that are just I, I don't know. I just love Highlander decks, and this is such a sweet payoff, especially if you combine it with like Brewmaster, and just like get multiple copies of it. True. Or I don't know. I, I could. Uh, I just love this card, but obviously, it's not good. <laughs> Plus, there's some good get... tools here that you get as well, right? In Highlander, if you're running something like Hunter's Pack, it gives you more flexibility to what you can do. Yeah. I'm going to give it a two. Even It, it probably deserves a one, but... I'll, stick with, a I'll stick with the one there. <laughs> and that's a soft spot in my heart. I'm going to give it a two. I'm is not going to sandwich. <laughs> oh, they should have had her, like, fit some sort of food something in the art or something. <laughs> Anyways, change the cost of spells in your hand to five. Spells. So, Pyroblast, Flame Strike, Blizzard, Puzzle Box. Uh, Luna's Blast Wave. Okay, I guess we shouldn't call <laughs> cards that are five mana don't count. Flame Strike, Blizzard, Power of Creation. Oh, yeah, Power of Creation. No, yeah, I mean, this card's just not. It's not good enough. The coolest one is like. Fire blast to me, but I'm never. 
I mean, are you? Two Pyroblasts and a Naga Sandwich, and you're... I can't even take it seriously because of this name. Naga Sandwich. <laughs> no, this card's, this card's bad. Okay. I give it a one. You could have a curve where you go, like, Sandwich into Power of Creation on six, but I don't think that's broken enough that you'd run this over current Conj stuff, because then you're running Power of Creation and Sandwich, and you don't want to put that in Conj Mage, I think, so... You'd be making a different deck, and then that that different deck needs a lot more stuff to make it good than just this into power creation. You so, know, should we should we just be analyzing the mage cards on how good they are in Conjure's Mage? Like, how much do we want a five mana five five when we conjure Ziliac? So I I don't think I guess it's decent. <laughs> I I no no I agree that's a very good point because we're writing this based on how we think it'll be in the current meta, not a hundred percent, but we're taking that heavily into consideration. And Cyclone Mage, nothing got printed that says Cyclone Mage can't be run anymore. And Cyclone Mage looks like it's going to be still pretty crazy. Even if we're not running that many new cards, even if we're not running any new cards, it's still going to be pretty crazy. So I do think that's a very relevant question. And I think the answer is no, you're not running this in Cyclone Mage. I'm, I'm going to give it a two. I, I, I think if you have some sort of... Actually, no, you wouldn't even run this in Freeze Mage. Never mind. No, it's a one. Yeah, this card's a sad one. It's cool, but... It is pretty cool, and it's a throwback to, like, one of the most broken cards in Wild. Naga Sea Witch, yeah. Yeah, Naga Sea Witch, just five mana, summon all eight eights from your hand. Okay, next one. Dune Sculptor, three mana, three, three minion. Um, after you cast a spell, add a random mage minion to your hand. This, I think, is interesting, because it can have some applications in Cyclone Mage. The difference is that with Mana Cyclone, you get a bunch of spells back, which you know you want for your hand size, and spells are useful. Um, they can be used as removal. Some of them generate resources. Some of them generate uh, like tempo on board. But I think if you add a random Mage Minion to your hand, on average, it's not something that's really going to help you in most situations, specifically with Cyclone Mage. So I, I think because of that, this won't really be included. I mean, there's some cards where you'll be like, sweet, I have like an extra Cadger now, I have like a Daring Fire Eater I can use next turn, I have another Sork, but if you get stuff like Kirin Tor Mage, or Pyromaniac, or like Ethereal Arcanist, Kirin Tor Tri there's just so many minions that don't really do much. There's some crazy high payoffs, right? Like in a value mirror, if you get like Caligos, sweet. If you get like Toki, sure, but most of the time you're getting a minion that won't really be played, so you're just generating hand size. And I don't think Mage needs a 3 mana 3-3 three, three that makes more hand size. Like, we already have three drops that we want to play, like Banana Buffoon, Arcane Intellect, um, which on average probably help us a bit more. So the way I see it is comparing this card to a card like Blink Fox or Messenger Raven, which are both, like, fine cards. Blink Fox probably wouldn't be played if it weren't for a vendetta and messenger raven was more of a fringe card that was playable for a while against warrior just kind of like as a tempo card that replaces itself possibly get high value and you got to discover uh, you'd have to like play three spells to see the same pool of cards that a uh, messenger raven would give you so yeah i just don't think that this card's that good it it i think one thing to note is that in specialist if you happen to hit like an actual hard control deck, and I'm not talking bomb warrior, I'm talking control warrior, then this might be a lot better. But I, I don't see that. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I don't really see it, and that's not going to come up that much because most people are running bomb warrior anyways right now. With the current iteration of mage, the warrior game plan is usually Luna's Pocket Galaxy into Antonidas or like Alex Straza and just like kind of bring them down. Uh, I could see if. Luna's Pocket Galaxy rightfully gets nerfed, and that strategy is no longer valid, or less valid. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, maybe a six mana you probably still want against Warrior, but maybe not in your primary deck. Let's say it gets nerfed back to like eight mana, and they just never want that card to be good again. This card could be somewhat playable against Warrior, because originally you it wasn't like Mage completely demolished Warrior, with, but with Pocket Galaxy it did. So I kind of feel like, I don't know. I'm still kind of iffy on it. Like, I feel like I'd still rather have, like, Messenger Raven, I think, over this. It's kind of my problem. Yeah, no, no, I, th I think like, I agree. Such a similar card. Um, but if you get this off Conjure's Calling, it's pretty sick. 
So true. It's it is three mana. You can yeah. conjure buffoons, snip snap, yeah. depending on what you're running. Yeah, could be interesting. And like, it's actually so funny. So I come from. Have you played other card games besides? Uh, I'm sure you have. Uh, the, the, define Magic define played, is I guess the the way to say it. I have played them, experience but not. I wouldn't say I have experience. <laughs> I've played oh, them okay. before, though. Well, what the the point I was going to make was in other card games, whenever you're like looking at new cards or a new set, you think about things everyone thinks about the meta synergies building new decks and stuff but like the crazy thing about hearthstone and it took me forever to get used to because i played a bunch of magic before hearthstone is that i pay so much more attention to like what happens when you randomly get this card off witchy lackey or conjures calling because it just happens so much like so much of hearthstone is just knowing what are the percent chance that you get a taunt off this drop you know what are the chances you get a rush you know what can you have this because there's so many situations you find yourselves in and you have to like kind of figure out what are your outs or even just like what are like the good value spots of certain drops. So I've been like I don't know. I've, I've, this card is obviously important for that sort of thing. You know, three drops just got a little bit better. It is slightly marginal, but mm -hmm. if you're ever in a spot where you're just like, wow, I am just out of cards and I need more minions, I don't know, it would come up eventually. No, that's fair. It, that's it, that's it, a good it, way. Instead of winning by one in however many three drops there are. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty fringe, but I like stuff. No, like that. I think that's a very applicable mindset because that's a lot of what we have right now, right? When a lot of these cards say random, like conch calling, um, discover stuff like that. I think this, uh, yeah, like you said, what you like as well. I, I think it's a good way to actually think about that because you don't want to come into the situation. Yeah. So if you randomly evolve into it when you're not trying to, then cool. But if you're trying to get something out of it, then yeah, that that's that's something you do have to know. It's kind of like an out if you're trying to look for more value yeah like when i play conch on a sea giant i'm thinking archmage into safeguard for example like that's mm -hmm. my out you know or right. if i'm conjuring my four drop and i'm like i need a noyo module right now you know that's my out it's just like for those situations where you're like i am in such a shitty spot which happens you lose like at least one third of the hearthstone games you play uh so yeah in all those scenarios one third of the time you do need to like know what your outs are yeah. So it comes up a lot. The, the decision point comes up a lot. The payoff very rarely comes out of it, but what's important is if you make the right decision. All right. I'm, I'm down with the one. It's two mana. Draw a secret from your deck. It costs zero. Um, I'll pull up the secrets. I like that it draws the secret, because I like thinning the deck out. Um, so basically, it's like getting a random secret, but it's a secret that started in your deck. So instead of it being a pool of random cards, which is normally bad, it's a pool of quote unquote good cards mm -hmm. but what are the good secrets like ice barrier spellbender uh obviously the new secret we'll get to later is really good uh, i think that card might make this card good um and there is some secret payoff so i think it's kind of more time to look at mage as a whole yep um since we're kind of getting into the secret territory because we have ancient mysteries flame word cloud prince Get five mana four four if you control secret deal six two mana three two if you play a secret deal two damage to all enemies so i guess that's it i don't know like it's kind of hard for me to imagine wanting mage wanting to switch over to a more secret centric deck mm -hmm. but i i don't know flame ward is really powerful i could see it i could see it if like mountain giant got hall of famed and mage had to like sort out its new identity but uh, I don't know. The card. The card's obviously efficient. I think this card's good if you like go back to old metas where we had explosive runes mm -hmm. and counterspell, and we had like archaeologist. I guess archaeologist is a good card to compare this to. Um, archaeologist would draw you the secret, so they both did that. But instead of getting a two-three, you get a free secret. A free secret, I think, is comparable. Like getting spending two mana. I don't know. I guess you're only netting one mana. I don't know. I, I, th I think one of the important things is that since it costs zero, you don't have to play it import like immediately. You can save it for like a Cloud Prince or Flak Mage, or you can even oh, use it. it this point. is applicable in, in Cyclone Mage too. You could use it with the Cyclone. True. Um, does that mean it's good enough? I mean, we don't currently run secrets because they're not good enough by themselves. I don't know if we would still run them if they were too. If it would say you know play call, pay two mana have a zero mana secret now in your hand 
because sometimes you draw them too, so it's not always the case. But I feel like this card is not unplayable, so I give it a two. I agree. It's not quite a three, but it's not unplayable. There's yeah, applications, one yeah. Being unplayable, so I can't I can't give it a one. So I think I just give it a two, and then not really sure about the whole secret package. Like I don't think it's gonna be good right now in this meta, but I do kind of feel like. Something's got to happen to Mage, I think. I, I really feel like Mage will still be tier one after this meta, or after this expansion. What do you think about and... Secret Keeper? Secret Keeper? Mm. You ever switch to that. aggro? Yeah, someone in chat popped it up. I like it. It's interesting. The, the Flame Ward only deals with to minions, so it doesn't like burn the face. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of... I don't think there's don't enough know. support for Tempo Mage. I think it's it's interesting yeah. to keep that in mind because again, if more stuff like this gets printed, eventually in, in a few sets we will have something playable. Um, yeah. I mean, it's technically I think all the secrets are technically unplayable in the current meta, just because of how good Mage is right now. Like obviously, Cyclone Mage is just so good that these cards don't make up for the difference. So yeah, I mean, technically you could give them all ones because they're technically unplayable uh, competitive wise, but I I'm, I'm gonna give this a two because yeah. I think that if Mage ever does get nerfed, then this card's playable. This is also technically a nerf to uh, Cyclone because if you get this generated, it doesn't really- Oh yeah, yeah, I was actually, I thought about that earlier. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, that's actually pretty big. It's a slight nerf to Cyclone. That's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, it's not cool because I, I want I to play Cyclone. I want to play Cyclone in Soul because I play that deck so damn much. But it's probably for the best. Cyclone's already gotten a lot of good minions. I feel like to get off. We haven't gone over the neutrals yet, but I feel like even the neutrals. Just a quick point I want to make: a lot of the neutrals are just have the keyword reborn on them, and reborn is excellent. Is something excellent to transform into because you just get like a free value minion or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I feel like all these reborn means just make like evolving and conj calling even stronger than it was before by like a not insignificant amount. Yeah. Like like maybe like in five percent of your games, I feel like it's gonna matter more, which is a lot to me. Five percent's a lot. I think. No, definitely. Five percent is is a uh, very non negligible. Yeah. All right, let's All right. move on to Flame Ward. So new new mage secret, three mana. After a minion attacks your hero, deal three damage to all enemy minions. And we saw this on stream that, uh, just a note, it's after. So the, the attack goes through. It's not like explosive trap. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if your opponent has a wide board, that's still kind of okay because, you know, you deal three damage to everything. But it's not like it'll stop it completely. So this won't, exa for example, play around Leroy. It'll play around Leroy's step. But and it has to be a minion, so it can't be proc by a druid's shapeshift or a rogue dagger. Oh, good point. Hmm. That does make it better than explosive in that sense. Yeah, because it, it has to be a minion, so it's most of the time uh, gonna hit that minion, if not all the time. They won't always kill it, but this this would be decent against rogue. So I, I, okay, let me preface with I don't think we're running this in anything. Like, just hard putting it in our deck. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you get this randomly off of Cyclone, this is also included now for Magic Trick, which is oh, good point. not awful, right? Sometimes when you're playing Mage against Rogue and you're under pressure, um, you don't have Nova, you don't have to dry an opening, and you just got to find something to do. This that's, is, that's like, honestly decent. honestly insane. That's, like, like, seriously. Like, the best thing we could have done before was Shooting Star or, like, Nova. Mm-hmm. Now we just have access to this works against to token Druid. druid too yes. i i might have i might have finished top eight if this was a good thing i lost my uh my final round against token druid in the, in in vegas yeah like potentially a really insane sideboard card if you're mage and you just want to have is this actually going the anti rogue deck I, I don't know. You'd have to test it. It's not bad, honestly. You'd, you'd have to see what else you'd cut, but at least randomly generated or discovered, this card has applications, and I oh, think yeah, they're sure. they're decent. For sure. But as a card itself, maybe a two. I don't think it's unplayable, 
if you do yeah, have I think it's unplayable like if aggro decks become very popular like let's say we th we finish theory crafting or even if we miss something someone else comes up with a super aggro deck it might not hurt to just have uh a, like a, a an anti-aggro mage sideboard yeah i think I it's that. i think it's a two yeah i agree and the matchups you want this card in it's very good and the but as a whole it's just not really there yeah. we're tolling pilgrim eight mana eight five or sorry, eight mana five five. Battle cry discover a copy of a spell in your deck, cast it with random targets. Uh I feel like I've I've heard a lot of good things about this card. It's comparable to the Tortolan, the eight mana five four that some that play like a random spell that you discover. Mm -hmm. The primal like mini yog. Obviously that card was like never good. This card you have control over it, so you could the problem for me is you have to include cards like Blizzard into your deck. You have to play I mean I, I feel like it's more like a freeze mage card. Yeah. Freeze Mage would be one of the decks that you would include Blizzard, and it's not bad with Frostbolt. So this is something you would you could run up, uh, in, in, in Freeze Mage because... Well, first of all, if you just get to eight... Okay, let's talk about spells that would be in Freeze Mage. Nova, Blizzard, Conj, you would need that. Probably Intellect, and still probably oh, yeah. Ray of Frost. Um, when I was making my Freeze Mage for Vegas, I didn't have that many extra cards. You could have something like a Frostbolt in there for some extra anti-aggro stuff. But the, the, the main auto-includes would be Nova, Blizzard, sorry, Pocket Galaxy as well, Conj, and Ray of Frost. So most of the time, when you play this, if you're running six to seven spells, two-sevenths of the time, you're going to hit um, Nova or Blizzard. And even if you hit Ray of Frost, um, it'll cast it randomly, and you still get the second half of the twin spells, so it can be a, a targeted freeze as well. So... Two sevenths of the time might be frequent enough that you can consistently play it, and you'll likely just get a freeze off of it. And obviously, there's the huge payoff if you you know coin Pocket Galaxy and then play this on the five. Yeah, like this in conjunction, it has synergy with Pocket Galaxy too, because it becomes one mana and also can cast Pocket Galaxy in a matchup like Warrior, where you like let's say you haven't drawn your Antonidas yet, like getting Pocket Galaxy off this would just be amazing. And if, oh, wait, that's another point. If, if you also get Conj off of this, and obviously you want this to be the only thing on the board, but. Yeah, yeah. It gives you a second half of the twin spell from the Conj as well. I feel I... like this is more of a anti warrior card, possibly. Like, I could see it, like, in maybe one of in Freeze Mage, but it's definitely worth a shot. I don't know if it's good enough, but I don't think it's unplayable. I think it's probably a two. I think it's fair, yeah. I don't think this is crazy i just think it has some interesting applications i think two is fine okay cloud prince five mana four four um elemental battle cry if you control a secret deal six damage so it's basically a fireball but um not held back by fairy dragon effects um i mean the effect is powerful but a we've already kind of talked about why we're not running secrets right now and I don't think with the cards that have shown up so far, it incentivizes to run secrets. Probably a one for me. This might be something you run in like a... The effect is powerful, but you would never play this. I, okay, let's let's talk something more of like a temple mage where you would be running Ancient Mystery, Secret Keeper, stuff like that. In that, yeah, I could see you running this. But I think currently in the meta, I don't see us playing this. I'm kind of wondering if there's an anti-mage mage deck that you could play. So freeze mage. No, not freeze. Like secret, like aggro, basically. Just like with burn, and because um, I like if you run mage with like double spellbender, for example. Mm -hmm. I guess spellbender is kind of easy to proc though. Never mind. I think spellbender is really good. It's not as good as I think it is. Yeah, every time I get yeah, it off of know. magic trick, I'm like, this is insane, and then I'm like, wait, uh, actually. Yeah, then they it's... play a banana or. <laughs> yeah. Or <something>. yeah. Like, <laughs> Wow, this thing never gets conscious. It gets conscious calling like one tenth of the time or something. I don't know. Like, so in Wild, for example, like this is like one of those cards that just has a pretty insane payoff. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, similar to damage. It's like the it's uh, than, the valet. It's better than valet. It's better than Sun Reaver, the five mana four four. If you control a minion, it's better than like Fire Elemental. It's better than Firelands Portal. Just like things with like the similarly deal damage and then get stats on board. Five mana for six damage and four four stats is 
pretty premium. But to do that, you need to either spend eight mana in total on one turn, set it up, and have the secret not pro well, be procced, or play Ancient Mysteries. Yeah, yeah. The Ancient Mysteries getting the zero mana secret is kind of why I'm a little bit more optimistic on this card. I, I'm personally, I, I'd give it a two. I think that if we're giving Ancient Mysteries a two, then I'd like to give Cloud Prince a two as well. I don't think you'd ever like if you, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you ever play Ancient Mysteries, oh you then you would be okay. Playing Cloud that's Prince as well. that's a fair point. I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. I'll change it to two. Uh, next up is Arcane Black Mage, two mana three two. After you play a secret, deal two damage to all enemy minions. Uh, yeah. Again, I mean, it's kind of just like similar philosophy to go along with the other two secrets. Although this one is, I feel like, less of a payoff than the. Like I think, this card's this card's interesting because two mana three two has a lower floor, but it also has a lower ceiling because dealing two damage to all enemy minions. There's some matchups that or some board states that you just don't care about dealing damage to enemy minions, and this guy's not really going to survive. Like against the matchups that you want to deal two damage to all their minions, this card's not going to survive if you play it on curve. Um, which means that do you really want to be saving this with a uh, on turn four with ancient secrets or turn five? Uh, just playing hard casting a secret uh i don't know like it's okay in some scenarios but i think that like i i think we're on the other hand with the cloud prince the payoff was there the six damage is a lot a four four body is like pretty sizable uh the payoff with this guy i feel like just is not there i see this card as more as a two mana three two than anything else it's like to me this is like a two mana three two a slight upside than like looking at the payoff first and then looking at the stats second if that makes sense i think it's fair so, so to me this is a one yeah i don't think you would necessarily run this in the ancient mysteries deck i i think some of the things they're trying to do with this is make it playable in a highlander deck just have more ways to you know do aoe mm -hmm. which can help it but i don't know if that's going to be powerful enough to warrant oh, running you know, we it. should have in our spreadsheet we should have a Reno Jackson column, and he just rates every card a five because he can only play Highlander, so just every card's playable. <laughs> <laughs> just every card's an auto-include. Uh, that'd be confusing, though, because there is a, a wild player called Reno Jackson. <laughs> oh, true. That's pretty funny. All right. Next one, Reno the Relicologist. So this we've all seen already. Uh, six mana, four, six, same stats as old Reno, but the battle cry is that if your deck has no duplicates, Deal 10 damage randomly split, split among all enemy minions. So it can't go face, and it randomly deals 10 pings um, to your enemy's board. Um, I don't think death rattles go off during the uh, the effect, so it, it's not like a, like a Shaman Earthquake we'll see later. It's just what you see gets dealt 10 damage to randomly. The effect is powerful. The problem is the deck kind of isn't. Yeah, Highlander Mage probably one of the least appealing of all the classes yeah i mean you'll be able to do stuff with uh zephyrus later but i don't think zephyrus is the zephyrus and this together okay zephyrus being shown made a lot of other uh like reno decks seem a bit more appealing but mm -hmm. again it's gonna do something decent and then that's gonna be it so then, like, how often do you win because of doing something decent? Not that frequently. If you look at the meta now, you have to do something pretty crazy to, to win, like crazy Cyclone Turn, crazy Giant Conch stuff, like Nova, Cadgar, like, and, and this doesn't quite fit that. It's something nice that if, 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 let's say the duplicate thing wasn't there, right? And clearly that'd be insane, but if the duplicate thing wasn't there, you could run this in Cyclone Mage. Because a lot of the time, if you don't have the Cyclone or the Giant and you're trying to find stuff to do, sometimes you just have to YOLO. And, and this is one way to just not have to YOLO. But with the restriction, I don't think it's it's really usable in the current meta. Yeah. I just... Uh, Mage is just one of the least appealing. Like, I, I don't know. I've been pretty excited to build some Highlander decks, but mate, this payoff just doesn't really do it for me. So I'm going to give it a 1. I'm going to give it a one with a star because, of course, as more sets come out, we have access to more tools. Maybe something gets better. Or let's say Conch Calling gets nerfed, Mountain Giant gets Hall of Fame, then maybe we have to try to maybe. find something else. 
Yeah. Which is why I'd, I'd give it a one with a star instead of a two with a star. It's just not really playable right now. Yeah. All right. Next, we have Raid the Sky Temple, which I don't remember what this reward does. If you, you uh, if you mouse over the, so if you click on the card oh. and then mouse over the, uh, yeah. Oh wait, wait what? The Ascendant Scroll, on their related cards in the bottom right corner. Oh, related cards. Yeah. Thank you. Add a random mage spell to your hand. It costs two less. Why I can do this with Mana Cyclone? Why do I have to? Uh huh. Yeah. The card's just bad. One. Yeah, one. It takes too long to get online, and once it's online, it's... it's it, once it's online, you don't even really care. <laughs> yeah, like, it doesn't... The payoff's not great. They just had some rightfully poopy cards. They don't need no help. Yeah, I mean, it, if they added even more support for Cyclone, I think people would start sharpening pitchforks. Yeah, yeah Twitter would not be happy. Okay. Ooh, someone said, would we run that if that was Discover? If, uh, if the hero power was discover a card that cost two less. Yeah, it'd probably just be an auto include. Yeah, right? that'd be a lot better. <laughs> it would be insane. It would just almost be an auto include. Well, maybe not in Cyclone because of Mountain Giant. Yeah. You don't want to like play something turn one. Eh, never mind. Okay. Sorry. Mountain Giant's better. Uh, puzzle Box of Yogg-Saron. Uh, ten mana. Cast ten random spells. Target's chosen randomly. So it's kind of like a mini Yogg. Um, I don't think this is a card you run because it costs 10 mana and we don't really run 10 mana things unless they... So the thing is this could read win the game, kind of like old Yogg. You'd kind of have a, if nothing, like if all else fails and I'm losing the game, I hit this button basically. But I don't think you want this in Cyclone Mage because a lot of the time the game is decided way before turn 10. Like I'd say the vast majority of games, you don't really get to turn 10. And those, and even those that you do get to turn 10, you're not gonna be in a situation where you necessarily need to say, I have to do this or I lose. You'll, you'll still be trying to win the game. And this is like a, an absolute, oh crap button, which I don't think you need in Cycle Mage because a lot of your cards are oh crap buttons already. Um, you can get this randomly generated, not off of Magic Trick, but off of Cyclone. Which means that... That's the part I'm yeah. concerned about, is... What are you going to do now? Like, mage... Dude, there's literally just going to be some scenarios where you get your mage pinned against a corner, ready to have lethal, and then they play a puzzle box that they randomly generated, and you're just like, great. That's just awesome. Remember all those uh, tournament clips you saw when Yaw got played and the game was yeah. basically over and then someone got very upset and yeah. someone was like, I'm so yeah. sorry. That's not gonna... happy about yeah. this card. Really not happy about this card. Like, it's, it's a card you don't include in your deck and it makes it so when you randomly generate it, you can... It's. I, I hate this. Like, I just hate this card. I hate it so much. Like, this is the last thing I want Mage to have access to is this... And so, a, just like a super insane oh crap button, you know. You can even magic trick into arcane. Um, what's the thing? The one mana that the, you can even magic trick into it. Basically, there's the one mana. Oh, that tome of intellect. Get a random. Yeah, tome. So you have outs. <laughs> yeah, you just always have outs, and like you play two mana cyclones. So it's just like it's not gonna happen all the time, but when it does happen, it's really, really, really obnoxious. Like it's just such a tilting way to lose the game. But it's great for viewers, I guess. I don't know. But it's. I, I don't think it'll affect I'll most games. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to be on the side that plays it. <laughs> great for your mage player. A lot of the time, you're going to get this and you're going to be like, crap, I can't play this for like six turns. That kind of sucks. Um, and I, I just went in on a cyclone because I needed something. So I, I think it's good and bad. It's just heavily going to depend on the, like the, the game state. Yeah. Like, the reason why I think it's a buff for Mage is that it feels like there's almost no downside because you only ever play this card when you're losing. And if you're winning, well, you're winning. So who cares yeah. what, what this randomly generated Mage spell was. But if you're losing, like, the ability to just completely win. That, that's why I think it's a buff, to, I guess, be a little bit more clear, is that there's, like, no, there's no floor on this card. It's just a randomly generated spell that you'll get sometimes, and you don't have to play it unless you're losing. Mm -hmm. So... It's fair. It's like a free roll, basically. It's like it's like, oh, you would have lost this game. Well, flip ten coins, and uh, if you get a few heads, then uh, it's not, you actually win this game instead. So that's that's all it is. It's like a free reroll coupon. Okay, but 
for constructed, like in. Oh yeah, yeah. In, including it in your deck, it's obviously not playable. One. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, implications even if we're not running it in our decks. Thank you.